Walk around the compound and we'll see some tigers and then hopefully hear a squeak. I'm blow bloom. Oh my goodness. Just ah. Do you even have any idea? I mean really. The effect that you're having on people? Ah, <laughs> uh, little Ezzy Choo Choo. Little Ezzy Choo Choo. Oh my gosh. All aboard the Dorbs train. Choo choo. Ah. Uh, a snuffle drink. A drinkle? I don't know. Do we even have words anymore on the webcast? It's just a complete. What's the so word I'm looking for? <laughs> it's just a food processor. You just take a dictionary and you just put it into the garbage disposal. Well, no, because that means it goes away. No, we're trying to actually get different things. Look, look at him. Look at him. Look at you. Look at you. Little Ezzy. Little Ezzy Choo Choo. Oh my gosh. Yes. Yes. Yes! Oh my goodness. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Fantastic introduction to this Walk Around the Compound webcast. And without further ado, hello all you big cat lovers out there it's me derek again welcome to another super duper fantastic episode of the walk around the compound webcast what do you think there ezzy is it going to be a good one hmm is it going to is it going to be a good webcast sure we'll just take that as a yes we'll just take that as a yes why not why not Hi, girls. Oh, no, middle of the afternoon. Middle of the afternoon. <laughs> Hello, Meek Meek. Hello, Meek Meek. Hi, baby. Hi, baby. <laughs> How are you? How are you? She's a good girl. Yeah. What are you looking at? Hmm? What's up there? What's up there? <coughs> oh, you know. Speaking of Mika's and Micah's and whatnot. Oh my goodness, my my internet mom. Micah. She had her last day at Colab. She actually took on a new job. New job. So I have a new, uh, I got a new internet mom, well, a stepmom. Who I guess is going to be like doing stuff for the channel now. Now that my, my actual mom abandoned me. <laughs> no, I'm actually very, uh, like I had a, hey, don't be crazy. Don't be crazy. Well, Micah had an opportunity to expand some career options, and she took them, and I'm very happy for her. And here's the thing. We're still going to be working together on different things. So that's cool. So that's very cool. Hello! So I certainly wish... I certainly wish Micah the best in her, in her new endeavors. Right? Cassie does as well. Suspice! Yeah! Hey, let's go over to the shade. Let's go over to the shade. It's actually, it's not horribly hot, but it's enough. 
being in the sun doesn't certainly doesn't make things better and yeah today is Thursday and I'm filming this so it's gonna be one of those like where it, you film the webcast and then you upload it on the same day which it's more of a rarity it's it's certainly more of a rarity than uh, something that is the the commonplace thing so yeah as soon as I get done filming this oh boy gosh it's gonna go right up on them YouTubes it's gonna be so fresh I'm gonna probably, I'm gonna have to do a bunch of stuff myself As far as posting and stuff like that, I because I got, uh, I got spoiled. Oh my gosh, yeah, Micah spoiled me. Just taking care of the channel, take just taking care of so many different little things. Uh, oh, there's a baggie. There's a baggie. Hold on, I'm gonna pause this while I look for Noe. We found her. We found her. I didn't want to do. I didn't want to walk around just the outside of the enclosure, not having the camera really pointing on anything specific. I didn't want to do any sort of grass, grass around the compound type stuff. You gotta keep all these moments engaging. So that's. So maybe I maybe I'm just gonna start using that pause button more frequently, like this. <laughs> hey, people are like, don't do that again. <laughs> people are like, no, 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 Derek, no, not the, uh, not good. Hey, bags, how are you? Keeping Noe in line? Hmm? That's good, she needs it. She needs it. Yes, indeedy. I watched that uh, Isle of Dogs movie last night. I thought it was really good. Wes Anderson, of course. I like a lot of the stuff that he's done. I thought it was great. Very good. Very whimsical kind of tale. Whimsical. And just like different, just different quirky, interesting storytelling elements. And of course, which is very much just how he does things. He's probably one of the only people I can think of that's just like one of those, one of the only artists who. He's like, I'm quirky and different, and I'm just like, yeah, and it's good. You, you know? Because there's other times people will try to do kind of like, I'm quirky and different. It's just like, you're just trying to just be eh, something. You're trying this thing, and it's it's just kind of cringy. But like, he does it, and it's just like, okay. Or there's other ones where it's like, I'm quirky and different. And it's like, that's cool. And I'm like, I'm going to just keep being quirky and so quirky and different. Look how, and I'm like, okay, that's great. Good. We got it. You're different and quirky. I mean, I liked a lot of the stuff that you've done, but now it's starting to get a little bit much. I'm like, hey, right, guys. I'm like, yeah, there's another thing. Is it quirky and different? It's totally quirky and different. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Hi. Tim Burton, anyone? <laughs> what? I love him. Love him. But he's done a lot of different things where it's like, we get it. Tim, we get it. <laughs> we get it. We get it. Like I said, masterful. I, I'm, not, I'm not even joking. Love, like, more, love more things that he's done than not. But then there's others where it's just like, okay, Tim. <laughs> gotcha. Gotcha. All right. Oh. Oh. Papa. 
<gasps> Hi, Yano. Hi. How are you? What do you think? What do you know? How you feeling? <sighs> oh, uh, did you hear about the uh, the sighting of the uh, of the uh, of the craft? Yeah. The unidentified uh, flying object. Yeah. Yeah. It was a UFO over the compound. Do you know anything about that? <laughs> oh, me too. They're not wanting to play along. Derek, if you would have actually come out and filmed earlier this morning when it was cool out and a lot more of us were active, then, you know, it would have been alright. I'm going to go ahead and pause again. Hi, Bonnie Boo. Hi, Bon Bon. Hey, Sugar Pie. How are you? I had to wait for her. A lot of times what will happen, you know, there's cars... People out there have like families or kids and everything, and then they'll drive up like slow, and then the kids are like, oh, it's a tiger! It's a oh my god, look at that one!" And then they'll they'll usually um, turn around right there, and then they'll just slow back over there. And I just wanted to let them kind of pass by because sometimes here's the other thing: sometimes they'll have quests. Sometimes they see someone inside the compound, and then they'll have questions they're like, "Hey, what's this all about?" And yeah, you just want to be polite. I didn't want to be filming during that, in case they had questions. And also, I didn't want to have, you know, just voices in the background like, ooh, look at that one! <laughs> you know? So, I just waited for them to kind of pass by. Yeah. was reading about uh, back to the Isle of Dogs movie though because like a lot of times if I see a movie that I really like I'll, I'll read up on it and I'll read like about the production on it I'll read about um, I'll read about just different kind of elements of it and everything and <laughs> I was reading different articles but there was like kind of confusion I mean because uh, Wes Anderson it was a story about um, you know a bunch of dogs that got exiled to an island and it took place in kind of like this future slightly pseudo futuristic uh, like a Japanese city and it was all kind of done like stop motion kind of claim it like it's not exactly claymation but it's a stop motion type of animation again like I thought it was a very good movie and then you see these different kind of articles that were just like cult like Isle of Dogs Cultural appropriation or nah? And some of them seem to kind of have like an exit because the vast majority of the reviews were, uh, you know, very positive. And it was like, I, I just thought it was a very kind of creative kind of way to mix these different types of storytelling kind of things where uh, you had, you know, like the, 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 characters in the movie who were Japanese they spoke like they spoke Japanese without like subtitles the, there was like a can't remember the guy like but there was a um, prominent uh, uh, Japanese writer slash producer who was part of the core team and helped to develop the movie whatnot but the dogs themselves they were voiced by Americans which kind of lent itself to like okay like they they can kind of communicate, like, the people and the dogs, kind of, but they don't necessarily speak the same language, but at the same time, they're still kind of... Where it's, it, was just an, it was an interesting storytelling device, I thought. And I kind of thought of it, like, in those terms. It was just a storytelling device. 
but then of course you know people are just like well what was that all about and and then kind of uh, talking about how I wanted there was an article that talked about like yeah you know the the movie highlighted various elements of Japanese culture and they did it you know uh, very very dutifully because again they had a lot of kind of uh, uh, Japanese influence as far as like the writing and production staff is concerned they had like different people kind of making sure that certain elements of the culture was being portrayed and displayed accurately but then there was one person who's some I don't know some journalist was kind of saying just uh you know the the pinter the pinterest the pinterest gingness it was a word that kind of made up a word the pinterestingness because they were basically just like showing just the touristy uh elements of the thing it's like we got it Oh, the sumo and sushi. Yeah. Like, what else? And it's... <laughs> and I'm like, I'm like, okay, I can understand. I, here's the thing. And I, I'm not going to say that I don't understand the point that they're trying to make. That, you know, it's it's almost kind of like if some if people, if a, you know, whenever there's like a foreign influence and they try to make a, like a movie and then there's like, you know, caricatures of American culture and it's basically just like, you know, like hamburgers and guns and <laughs> master trades it's like yeah no don't get me wrong it's like i get it but like to the same degree it's like that is a you know it's a part like there's a part of it that uh we're not all like that yeah but a lot of us you know. <laughs> there, there's certain things that just kind of i guess they resonate but i guess some of the people they don't like that and then they, they, I guess it's that whole, the, the whole notion of othering and I, that, that stuff, I definitely think that that's an important kind of thing. Quote, othering. That's, uh, that's one of those terms where, uh, you're basically caricaturing or portraying people, um, not as part of the tribe, but as basically this kind of amorphous concept known as like the other. And when you do that, it's almost like you kind of, Strip them of, uh, you know, humanity. And then, that's like, that's one of those, you look at, like, instances throughout history. Where either it be, you know, people trying to do things for political reasons or um, economic or military reasons. They would kind of do stuff like that to paint their adversary in a certain light. But sometimes I think that... I sometimes I think that you look at like a like a whimsical like fun just kind of silly movie like this one that takes a lot of different kind of just you know little just like artistic kind of licenses and it's just kind of it's having its own kind of thing and then you kind of ascribe you know some of these other you know like much more like sinister motives I just I think that it's just kind of silly and it's just like you know okay and then the outrage that was expected, and of course the, and why would they have this? And is this the and it's so oh, okay, okay, all right, cool, gotcha, gotcha. You're you're offended, noted, noted. <laughs> ah, got it, got it. <laughs> Hi, what's up, little one? I am offended that you are so cute. You know, cuteness is like a thing that a lot of other animals have, and you're just trying to appropriate cuteness, whereas, you know, the other ones are just kind of naturally living it. I don't get it. But that being said, I do understand that there is, like, there's certainly distinctions. There's certainly distinctions that can be had. And that there's certainly times where people will be, like, absolutely caricatured. And it just gets into, you know, it just gets into, like, horrible. Yeah, it, it does. It's like, basically, you're talking about, you know, people trying to portray certain cultures that are not necessarily their own. And it goes, it, it's certainly, like, people are like, well, I'm just trying to be homage. And it's like, you're not being an homage. You're actually being just, like, very insensitive. Like, so that is a thing. So I guess it's like, where's, where's the balance? 
because that does that has historically speaking certainly been a thing that's happened hi Ra. hey i'm just coming up to say hi to you okay i'm not going to say hi to soups hi hey hey hi hi Ra. hey Ra. do you want to sniff this hat want to sniff this hat You know, for instance, it's like you. Hi, Mister. Hi, sweetie. Ooh, tricked you. Kind of tricked you. You were acting a little bit mean there for a second. Yeah, you were. I'm not looking in your eyes. Now I'm not looking in your eyes. I'm not looking in your eyes. Hi. Hi. You know, good examples of. Hi. 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 Oh, you're a good boy. Okay. Yeah, he's a good boy. Conflicted. He's conflicted. I guess a good example of the stuff on the other side is uh, you look at some of the cartoons, like Disney and Warner Brothers cartoons, like from the 1940s. Oh, man. Oh, boy. <laughs> oh, boy. There's some really, there's some bad stuff on there. And that was like, okay, now that goes into the, like, well, you can look at that and be like, that's clearly, like, that is overtly, I mean, just stereotyping, prejudicial, like, you know, based on races, I mean, it's just, it's being tremendously culturally insensitive. <laughs> Certainly. Which I, I admire, like, Warner Brothers, when they put out, like, their DVD sets, they basically kind of said, like, hey, we're going to show these things in this DVD set, and you're, you're like, some of the stuff is going to be really uncomfortable to watch, but we're not going to edit, we're not going to censor any of it, because to do so would basically to pretend, like, these types of prejudices and these types of biases and stuff like that didn't exist back in the day. It's kind of the take, and I'm like, okay, well, bravo, Warner Brothers. Good on you for that. Now, Disney, on the other hand, oh, boy, there are some things that they just are... They don't want ever seen the light of day. They're like, yeah, no, we're not going to do the moral high ground thing with Warner Brothers did. We're just going to bury it and you're never going to see it again. Dude. Yeah. So I guess that's a certain extreme. You're just like, well, we can all, we can all agree that that's inappropriate. I guess it's also, it's just like, well, where, where's that line? Where's the line? And then where, like, where does it go from, where does it go from caricature? And it's also, it's like you not being part of the culture and then not being, not treating it with enough kind of dignity and reverence. Or, like, when is it okay for someone from a different culture to basically kind of try to pay homage? You know, because there's instances of that where it's just like, okay, well, I want to, I want to try to do a faithful, you know, kind of homage to a certain kind of culture because I think it's a really interesting kind of thing and it's like when when is that like how like how do you kind of step forward with that that's these are some of the questions I think and the interesting kind of conversations that I think are certainly happening a lot right now hi again I watch Isle of Dogs for the most part like, people are saying just like, oh, it's a really awesome thing. And then there's, like, a few different kind of journalists who are just like, this movie is kind of sneakily problematic. And it's just like, I'm like, eh, I can, this was, okay, this was the thing where I kind of said, like, I kind of see the logic of what you're talking about. But at the same time, it's like, I think that it might be kind of, yeah, kind of stretching a little bit. There was one thing. It was... It was one article that I saw where I, I don't want to give away too much, but it was actually, it was an interesting thing where uh, they actually were drawing parallels between the Isle of Dogs and um, the United States military presence and its relation to Japan, which was a really interesting kind of take, which I don't know if that was something that was intended by the... Uh, by the writers, but when I when I saw that perspective, I looked back on it, and I'm just like, I that's that's an interesting kind of uh, observation. It's an interesting kind of 
way to interpret some of these things. But I guess like anything that's good, good art, a lot of times it doesn't necessarily matter what the intention of the artist like was in the first place. It doesn't matter what the intention of the artist was. As long as it gets you kind of thinking and feeling, well, then the artist kind of, they did their job. And as long as it kind of pushes forward ideas and it pushes forward kind of conversation and it pushes the limits of what you're, what you're supposed to be kind of thinking and how it is you're supposed to be kind of viewing the world, then that's a good thing. That's a, that's a good thing. There's probably plenty, I mean, there's countless instances of art where the artist says like, well, this art, I did this painting or I wrote this song or I did this thing specifically for X and X and X purpose. And it means blah, blah, blah. And it, and it's supposed to represent, you know, blank. And it gets interpreted a hundred different ways by a hundred different people. And that's fantastic. That's great. That is. I guess it's probably a good time to kind of jump on some of the instances of, uh, you know, like Western, uh, like movie production studios, like being just doing terrible jobs trying to uh, recreate, you know, especially like specifically like Japanese kind of cultural kind of things. Um, Certain Hollywood adaptations of anime has been awful. It has been terrible. Oh my gosh. What is Dragon Ball? Yuck. No good. No good. Hold on. Hi. Yeah. Speed Racer? No thank you. <laughs> Not good. Uh, yeah, the, Wach the, the Wachowski brothers did it, and they did make It's like, look, they made arguably like they made one good Matrix movie, and then the other ones were like, eh. they had elements, but it was just they. Eh. Which is interesting because like they, the Wachowski brothers, they were basically amateurs, in a way. Um, they had this fantastic concept, and they they had like this vision. And the studios were like really kind of like in, interested in the idea and the concept of the vision. But they basically, they, they kind of said like, well, you guys are kind of unproven. Like you've never really directed a movie. You've never done anything. So they made them direct like this other kind of, yeah, like a B movie kind of thing. And then they basically said like, all right, now we're going to let you make The Matrix, which was that first. So yeah, but yeah, no, they haven't really done too much since then. But it's like an interesting kind of thing. They came in, you know, if you can just kind of come in and just unproven, untested, and then you have a like literally like a billion dollar idea, and then you just kind of like, all right, I'm out. <laughs> That's all right. I kind of I gotta in a way tip my hat to that. So there's that. Uh, Ghost in the Shell. Oh boy. Oh boy. I mean, of course they get Scarlett Johansson to play a. You know, like a, a, a Japanese character, which of course, and understandably, a lot of people were pissed off. And just, it's, yeah. And funny thing, it's, I will say, it's like you actually go, if you were to go and look at some of the interviews from people like in Japan, they were just like, oh, it's going to be very interesting to see Scarlett Johansson playing. And like, like people in Japan weren't that pissed off, but I can understand how people, you know, uh, in, in America were a little bit more. One thing I was really pissed off about that movie was that. It it kind of really made the story way too, way too Americanized. If, I remember looking at the previews and thinking like, oh my gosh, it looks so startlingly similar to like the iconic imagery of the Ghost in the Shell, you know, uh, the, the, the original anime. It looks so similar, kind of shot for shot. It looks, it looked beautiful. But then come to realize that it, it turned the narrative where the final decision making was the final decisions were made through this lens of like wanting to preserve individuality and stuff like that. And it's like, that's not at all. That's not at all what the, 
what Ghost in the Shell was all about. It was, it was, because that's more of like an American kind of sentiment. Like, whereas, you know, you kind of go into Japan and they, they do technically, they definitely have more of a cultural kind of collectivism kind of thing. Like, we all work together kind of whatnot. And Ghost in the Shell was kind of like a hyper extension of that sentiment. Where it was basically like uh, uh, the major at the end, she basically kind of, you know, shirked away any notions of her individuality to become part of this greater kind of artificial intelligence kind of collective. And, and basically it was like understand, like it was questioning the, the notion of individuality and like, is it over, like, can you be something more if you are brave enough to just kind of be, it's, it was an interesting concept. That's what that was all about. But then of course, to make it palatable for American audiences, you know, <laughs> They had to kind of do this, like, no, like, I'm, spe- I'm, I'm myself, and I'm the special. And it's like, all right, that's, that basically, that's, you just did the opposite of what the original, of what made the original just so amazing. So, yeah, I get it. There's times where it's like, it's, it sucks. And then there, there's where, where the interpretations and then the, the revamps are just, bleh. then there's other times where it's like, hey, this is actually not a bad not necessarily a bad thing. You know, like, I guess, what do you think? What do you, like, in the comment section, like, where do you, like, what do you think about that whole thing? Like, where do you think maybe that line is? And, and how do you think is the best way to kind of go about um, paying homage and expressing appreciation and interest in, in cultures that may not necessarily be, you know, your own? Uh, I'd love to hear your thoughts. Love to hear your thoughts. So, yeah. Conversations happening now one thing they are making a uh, cowboy bebop live action uh, yeah i know i think it's either going to be i don't know if it's going to be a tv show or if it's going to be a movie all i know is that the original producers like are, have a heavy hand in it and they really don't want the original to the the, the vision and the story of the original to you know get uh, bastardized i guess so, yeah, hopefully that won't happen. That can't happen. That's too good. It is too good. It's like literally one of my favorite things in the world is uh, Cowboy Bebop. I love it. It's so good. If you've never seen it, that can, like, even if you could be one of those people, like, I'm not really into, I can't tell you how many people, I'm not into anime, but I love that. I love that one. I don't like any of the other stuff. I don't like other anime stuff, but I love Cowboy Bebop. Oh boy, gosh, it's so good. It's so good. For so many different reasons. I guess a lot of it is just because it doesn't feel like a traditional kind of thing and like the way that they tell stories. It's like this, I don't know. Maybe we can talk about, maybe we can kind of break down Cowboy Bebop in a whole another one. But anyway, run it out of time. Hashtag Dorbus Award in the comment section below. I'll talk to you next time. All right, bye-bye.